Hi there. Thanks for attending our talk. Um, our talk today is Remote Routing Charging Station for Fun and Profit. And you will be presented by me and my teammate, Bakat. Uh, we're going to share our bug hunting experience for Schneider at Trico Charging Station EV Link. Okay, so who we are? I'm Kevin2600. I'm a security researcher and I love breaking stuff. And this is my teammate, Buck. He's a security engineer. He's also the founder of RevDNS.io. Um, for the past few years, we have focused on vehicle security. For example, we have successfully demoed the NFC, NFC key fob relay attack for the Tesla Model 3 last year. And for this year, we have found three bugs for Schneider Electrical EV Link charging station. And one of them is scored as the most uh, critical bug. So here are the contents for today. Um, first, I'm going to do a charging station 101. I will be introduced how does it work and why do we need to concern its security. And then I will walk through some of the interesting case studies from the other security researchers on charging stations in the past. And eventually, back he will share the whole story on how we got RCE on the EV link and what's the impact can be can 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 it be uh, once we got in. Okay. So charging station 101. So why charging stations, right? Um, a lot of people talking about vehicle security nowadays, um, they usually refer to car itself. For example, they were talking about how to reverse engineer CAM protocols. Or can we sniff in the TPMS, TPMS for the tires? And if we can hack the key fob systems and get into vehicles. But let's not forget, there's a thing called V2X communication. And it's also played a very big part in the vehicle network. And the X, V2X, the X uh, can means many things. For example, vehicle to vehicle, V2V and we go to infrastructure, way to I, and also for the charging station, way to grid, way to G, okay? So for way to G, they usually refer to connection between the car and the charging stations. So when, when you go to charge station, you usually talking about um, you, you to interactive with the, uh, the SCADA system behind me or something like that, okay? So I think we, we where nowadays won't feel any strange to see a charging station around you uh, because they are everywhere now. And this is just a map to show how many charging stations are around the Chinatown area in Vancouver, Canada. See, I, I took this picture from the open source, open charge map, the IO, and you see, we already see many, many, all right? And also this one gets from a charging point map. And can you see how many of them are in the state right now? Amazing, right? So many of them. And they not only in, exist in the real world, we can find a lot of them exposed to the internet too. As you can see, we can use, usually uh, easily uh, find, find, find a lot of them uh, through some search engines. So for example, with the help from Shudan, we can easily spot a Tesla power pack system. Um, yeah, I think not many, but there they are exist. Also, if we were searching for OCPP, which is the protocol specially designed for communicating between the charging station and the backend server, we can spot many of them on the internet too. Um, so this is what a charging station looks like in the real life. See, as you can see, it can, it can be uh, different forms and sizes, but it's, it's like, for example, this one is uh, for uh, usually for the, a small residential area, and this is, can be uh, for just like commercial use. Well, okay. But regardless of the size of forms, they all got plug connectors. However, each country, each country has is, used its own standard. Even for a company like Tesla has even implemented their own version of connectors. 
And charging station usually use CAM protocol to communicate with BNS system on a vehicle, which is for stand for battery management system. But in Europe, they're using PLC, power line communication, to talk to the BMS with TCP IP. So yeah, they got they actually got an IP address. Right? Pretty cool, right? Hackers. And there are network server in the back end, right? So to taking care of like pay, payment system payments or any other service the customer may they may, may deal, need to deal with right so it's actually a whole lot of uh it looks like uh, it, it looks like a uh, actually iot network but it's bigger right okay um as i mentioned earlier charging station can use ocpp protocol to talk to the backend server and the latest version of ocpp relies on JSON for the messaging. And this is a great place for, uh, for, for us to do the forcing attack, right? So maybe we can force in some um, specific, specific uh, uh, area to find if there's any bug. Okay. Since the charging station is just embedded in systems so, and has provided many services. So the more services they provide, the more possibility we can attack them. So here are some of the tech vectors I can, I think we can try on. So first we can try to reverse engineer their, their uh, application, APP app applications to try to find if there's any uh, API interface exposable. Also, since they, are, they have the uh, cloud backend server, maybe we can try that on too. And like I said, their, the charging station itself is uh, most likely a uh, um, embedded system, they, they probably has the running on Ubuntu or other Linux system. So yeah, Linux system, we can try. Um, also, if we, we can take in part, we may find some debugging port um, accessible like JTAG or UART, right? And usually the, the, the charging station has some uh, wireless connection uh, with it, like uh, BLE, Wi-Fi or like 4G, 5G. And, when talking about a payment, they they probably using RFID and yeah, RFID is is also hackable too. Um, as I mentioned, the the vehicle will using CAN or PLC to talk to the uh, charging stations. Um, maybe there's a way to to hack it as well. Right. So back to the question we asked in the very beginning, why charging stations? Right, because I think they are already everywhere. And they're less expensive than cars. So buy a car, it usually costs a lot of money, but it's much cheaper if we're just targeting uh, charging stations. We can buy a brand new one and start from there. And right now, I, I when I do when we do the research, we didn't there's few, but not many people uh, focus on this area. So less attention, maybe that means there's a lot of bug for us to dis waiting for us to discover. So yeah, more functions, more tech batteries, right? So charging station case studies. Um, so for the first one, case first one is uh, uh, the one from uh, third control, a company called Third Control. They report out named Circle Car Life. Um, this is not new, but rather years old. However. We still can find lots of them online. You see, when I when we simply search for server circle car life, we we, we find a thousand two thousand nine hundred thirty two of them already still exposable online. Right. So currently there are multiple CVs under uh, circle car life charging stations. For example, it will leak username and password information like here uh, from the log file uh, without any authentications. So this is um, not acceptable, right? So many years and they still not fix it. Okay, um, case number two. Uh, there's multiple devices made by a, uh, sorry, <laughs> there's a, a man in the middle device made by a secure researcher and it can be used for sniffing and inject pockets between cars and charging station through PLC. I think this is pretty cool. Um, he has also released a tool to help us to decode the pocket. So if um, you're interested to research on, you can try to this uh, website. 
And even better, he also released another tool called V2G Injector, which can inject pockets into the cars and charging stations. However, this comes from for that. Uh, if you need to, uh, you, you have to be in an area that support PLC. For example, you, in most European countries are supporting them, but if you happen to be in China, um, you usually, you usually facing the, uh, the charging station only accept the CAM protocols. So you will not able to do this kind of research. Now, this is another uh, interesting research done by Tencent Blade Team. They found this design flaw uh, within a charging station payment mechanism. The way this payment mechanism work is the first, uh, uh, our car, like for example, BMS, we transmit the wheel call win number to, to the charging station and the charging station will transmit this, this uh, win number uh, all the way back to the, charge, uh, the backend server and they do the, do the background check over there. And then they, once they oscillate you, they will send back their uh, credentials uh, bound by the win, win number, all right? And once they, 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 they know you are a legit user, they will start uh, charging uh, the payments uh, accordingly. Okay. Now this is a uh, like this is thing called a uh, plug and charge. So as I mentioned, since the vehicle in China using CAM protocol to communicate with the charging station, so the blading what they did is they built a CAM main in the middle device called a uh, X charger. So basically, they, based, they build one device based on a Raspberry Pi that can sniff um, uh, the, the, the CAM protocols in between them, so main and middle attack again, but for the CAM protocol this time. So with help from this device, they can capture all the CAM traffic between the car and st stations. Now, um, what they have found is that some of the station in China using, as I mentioned earlier, on, they're using win number to authenticate the user for the payment purpose. Now, however, this win number is easily replaceable during the whole process. So they can simply uh, replace the, the, for the, the win number with different cards. So the other people will pay the, the fees for you. So free charge, right? Pretty cool. And also, like, it's nice they, they have done research on the Tesla. Now, they, they found the Tesla charging station actually using their private protocols. So we still need to have to re find a way to reverse engineer the entire private protocols. Um, if it, so, it's pretty. I think this is a pretty good uh, area to dig in more. Now, the last case, case four. This is an interesting case found by us. The story. Um, is we know that one of the popular charging station companies called Charging Points. They predict that uh, in by 2025, there will be 2.5 mil uh, EV charging stations swapped by then, right? I think this is a um, very popular one in, in Vancouver and across the country of in the state as well. So it's, the story is very simple actually. One day which we choose to reverse engineer their mobile the mobile application from them. And in the end, we, we have found a simple uh, reflected cross-site scripting bug for their backend server. Um, because they, they are using some kind of WAF system, but however, we find a way to bypass it. Um, and we right away as a, a, a ethical hacker, we report them the bug to the, to, to the company and with the full details discouraging. So end of story, right? No, turns out, the charge point security team takes security very seriously. They have rewarded us $1,000 for the bounty through HackOne. Well, $1,000, right? For just for uh, Chris, Chris <laughs> cross die scripting. I mean, pretty cool. <laughs> we cannot be hacked here. So yeah, big thanks for time up for, for the, for the uh, charging point team. Um, yeah. Okay. So now my teammate Buck, he will walk through the whole journey of bug hunting of Fortunata Evelink. Okay. Hi. 
I'm back now. Now I'm going to share our journey of bug hunting for Schneider EV link. This is my first time. Come, please bear with me. First, I like to make it clear our main goal here is to get root and achieve RCE on the target. Target, and we are lucky. We met our goal and were assigned three CVEs from Schneider in the end. Also, the reason to trust to research on EVLink、uh, is because the firmware can be easily downloaded from Schneider website, and there are a certain amount amount. Of EVLink device, I expose to the internet. So, the first step is to do some recon for our target, and as I said, we can download the firmware directly. The firmware is a top file. Top file. It includes files like bootstrap, homage. EVIC base image file and other binary files. Based on on these files, we can find that the target is an unbased device. Device. And from your boot file, we can find the boot rate, server IP, and some other. Configuration information. From our image, we know the kernel version and the entry point address, which makes it easy for later reverse engineer work. So now we learned the partition structure of our target, and we have tried to crack the root hash. Inside the shadow file, but it's failed. When they start to reveal the web manager and interface, it has many functions, such as log files, open parts, and firmware updating. Also, the path of a web application and the EVIC circle database file. Here are some open source component that EVLink is using. And interestingly, we found two hard coded secret accounts named Open and Schneider within the circle file. And they have been removed from the latest、uh, from web. After we have done the recon, time to hunting bugs for warm up. We start with the cross cross site script, and、uh, this gets us our first CVE. However, this won't help us to get a CVE. So let's try harder. We then moved on to reversing the binary file CGI server. We located some useful keywords as S core, and this is useful for us to distinguish different functions. We also found some web paths from CJS Server Five. This may be useful for later fuzzing attack. Eventually, we have located an interesting function within that function. We found a hard-coded CR tokens, and these tokens can be used to bypass. The login authentication process. Continue to analyzing the 
login process, we found that one's log C size. So parameter meter V153 V will become true. And uh, this is the same results as using hard-coded tokens, which confirm the light tokens can be used to bypass attack. Once manually embedded the security token within our request, we can successfully bypass the login authentication. So now we need to find a way for RCE. After we search the EXE CV, we have located the hard coded EPKK. And this key is used as signature verification for firmware. After we read the EPK install file, we found that the firmware package can be easily forged, forged. As long as we build an installing package with hard-coded EPKK. As you can see, rebuilding a new firmware package is very easy. We can put our own reverse shell payload into the firmware package. In order to trigger the bug, we need to upload the backdoor version of the firmware. As you can see, once the payload triggered, we got ourselves a root shell missing completed. So now we got RCE work. Let's write a working exploit in order to do that. We first need to know the process of updating from RAM and some parameters like final IP and we can use Wireshark to capture all that. Once we know the entire updating process, we can draw a flow chart for developing exploit and have the payload ready. And of course, we need to provide the secret, secret token for the cookies request. Once we got all the needed information, the exploit is ready to go. Now, you may ask, uh, what can we do after got RCE? I think most people will like to get a free charge, right? But there are, there are more. For example, it can be turned to bonus for DDoS attack. Also, also it can be a breaking point for the enterprise network. And thus, it has connected to BMS on the record. Maybe a way to surprise ransomware for cars. Here are some examples for operating to an internal network. This charging station is also part of the university network. And on this charging station, also running a building management application with a different part. This one has every more functions to manage the vertical charging system. So after we found those bugs, we have reported reported them to Schneider. They had fixed the 13 bugs in total for the EV Link product. 
and released the advisory, advisory, advisory last month, month, and assigned us three CVEs. So we believe that more trans will bring more attack vectors, vectors, and the charging station of V2X has got a huge potential for security researches. Thank you.